Becoming a QA engineer, specifically a manual or human tester, I feel is the easiest way to break into tech. The best part is you can learn a skill set for free. And this is coming from somebody who sells courses and partners with boot camps on the regular. Yes, courses and boot camps will help you expedite your process. But if you don't have the means or funds to afford either one, you still have no excuse. You can learn on your own. Anybody who says the only way to enter the field is to go to their boot camp or to buy their course or program is lying to you and misleading you. Like I said, you can learn everything for free on the internet. 10, 20 years ago, different story. But today, it's all available. But if you're going a free route, it's going to take more work. And honestly, take a little longer. Like I said, boot camps and courses help expedite your process by putting everything into one place. But the self-taught route takes a little research. Today's video is going to focus on being a guide to being a self-taught manual or human QA engineer. I'll create a separate video for automation and SDETS, which stands for Software Developer Engineer in Test. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is The Test Lead. And I make content to help you on your software testing journey. Today's topic is a free guide to help you to become a QA engineer. These are the sections of the video. We're starting with understanding the role of a manual QA engineer. Next, learning the basics. After that, testing documentation. From there, software testing methodologies. After that, SQL and databases. API testing. We'll then dive into certifications. Dive into practicing and building a portfolio. Joining QA communities. Creating a resume and applying for jobs. Getting initial experience. And last but not least, continuing to build your resume and portfolio. So first, understanding the role of a QA engineer, specifically a manual or human tester. Manual QA engineers are responsible for manually testing software applications to find bugs or problems, ensure functionality, usability, and quality before customers receive it. So the key purpose of software testers is to find problems before customers do, and then to report and document those problems to the people who create the software called software developers. They would then fix these problems, give it back to us to test, or test it again, make sure it actually works and has quality now, and then pass it off to our customers. Now let's dive into some key skills that you should try to develop for this role. Attention to detail. The ability to spot inconsistencies and potential problems in software. Analytical thinking. Breaking down complex scenarios and thinking like a customer. Communication. Writing clear bug reports and test cases, which we'll get to later, and collaborating with software developers. Curiosity, always asking what if to ensure comprehensive test coverage. This video will be a guide on the different topics that you should research and learn about to become a QA engineer. Remember, I'm just touching the surface and giving you a high level introduction into each topic. You then must do the research on your own. Like I said, it's not going to be easy, but it's free, so can't complain. Let's get started. Now that we talked about 
the roll high level. Let's talk about some basics. The software development lifecycle, as well as different testing types. Software development lifecycle. Understanding the software development lifecycle helps testers align themselves with developers and the rest of their team. Focus on the phases, requirements gathering, design, development, testing, deployment, and maintenance, and why it matters. It ensures you're testing at the right time with the right focus in each phase. So that was the software development lifecycle as a key part to what you do day to day. Next, let's introduce some basic but main testing types. There are hundreds of testing types out there, but for right now, focus on these. Functional testing, ensuring each feature works or functions as intended. Usability testing, testing the user friendliness of the software. Regression testing, ensuring new changes don't break already existing functionality. Exploratory testing, manually exploring the software without predefined test cases. Quick break, if you're enjoying the video so far, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you need help on your software testing journey, check out my website, thetestinglead.com. Now, back to the video. Next, test documentation. This is probably the most important part of your whole guide. Day to day, you're required to document different parts of your testing. That includes test plans, test cases, as well as bug reports. Let's start with a test plan. Usually your team lead or senior person will create this and it's simply documentation, outlining the objectives, scope and methods that are gonna be used to test something. Next, test cases. These are your different scenarios that you're gonna test throughout your process. And last but not least, bug reports. Anytime you're testing something and you expect one thing, but while testing it, you see something else that's a bug or a defect and needs to be documented in a bug report. That way, the developers know there's a problem. They can fix it and then give it back to you to test again. So remember, three key documentations, test plans, test cases, and bug reports. Next, we're gonna introduce some tools for testing documentation. There are many tools, but here are a few. Jira. Jira is a project management tool widely used for tracking issues and bugs. TestRail, a tool for managing test cases and tracking testing progress. Bugzilla, an open source, meaning free, tool used for bug tracking. Our next section is software testing methodologies. We're gonna focus on Agile, Scrum, and Waterfall. Understanding these different methodologies will help you adapt to different working environments that you're gonna see in the real world. Waterfall, which is slightly outdated, is a linear sequential model where testing happens after development. Agile is an iterative approach where testing is integrated into each development lifecycle, which is called sprints. Scrum is a framework within Agile, focused on delivering smaller chunks of work in short time frames, with daily stand-ups, sprint planning, and retrospectives. Every company has data or information that they must store. This information gets stored in things called databases. Think of databases as a large room of information that can include 
customers' names, their transaction histories, the items in stock, and so on. So we have this big room with all this information, but then it'll be hard to find information and take time. So to make it simpler, we create containers called tables. And different tables categorize different information in different sections. And the way we interact with this information is called SQL, which is structured query language. We can interact with different tables in our database by using this language. So it's essential that you learn it because every company has a database in the background. So here focus on SQL, which is the language to interact with databases and tables, and then learning about a database management system such as MySQL or SQL Server. After that, learn about APIs and API testing. API is short for Application Programming Interface. And in short, it's how two different computer programs interact with each other. So if a developer has code over here and needs to talk to code over here, it creates an API to interact. So focus on key HTTP methods, including get, which retrieves data, post, which submits data, put, which updates data, and delete, which removes data. We then have API responses used for verifying data in our response. Checking status codes, 200, 404, etc. So with these APIs, when they communicate, they'll send a message along with a status code, such as 200 meaning the message or action was successful or something in a 400 range meaning there was a problem. And that's how, from program to program, they interact. The most popular tool for testing APIs is Postman. I have probably 100 videos about Postman, so after this, you can watch those. But learning about Postman is essential. Certifications. Certifications are 100% optional. I have no certifications, but depending on where you live, how crazy the job market is, you may need or at least feel you need an edge over other people to solidify your skill set. And you can do this by getting a certification. Once again, not required, it's just extra. Popular certifications include ISTQB, Certified Tester, which is a foundation certification that covers basic testing principles. Then there's Certified Software Tester, CSTE, which validates professional level QA skills. Now you have the basic skill set of a software QA engineer focused on manual testing. I would try to join some communities. Personally, I'm trying to make a community, hopefully later this year, early next year, that like-minded QA engineers can just interact with each other. But for right now, look at some Reddit threads, maybe some Facebook groups, but just try to find other people who are like-minded and in the same position as you. But be careful that they're not just Debbie Downers and trying to bring you down. Because there's always that negative bunch that they're not being successful or they're having a hard time, they're gonna try to bring you down too and be negative. So just be careful about those people. Practicing and building your portfolio. There are websites online that you can test. Go to Apple or Amazon.com. There are also some practice websites that purposely have problems. Create a test plan create test cases and test scenarios, and go through the whole process. If you find problems, create bug reports, and just get practice doing this, because in the real world, that's your day-to-day -day life.
Now, everybody's favorite part, creating your resume and applying for jobs. If you had a previous job that's similar, the skill sets, maybe you had an analytical job or a job that involved a team or you were a leader somewhere, put all of that on your resume and show how those skills are transferable. As far as applying for jobs, there are hundreds of job searching websites like LinkedIn, Indeed, Monster, etc. I will create a LinkedIn profile first, update everything, have a professional headshot on your profile. From there, I will get LinkedIn Premium. It's usually free for 30 days. Use it for those 30 days and go hard. After that, cancel it before they charge you. I would then start applying for jobs. For a week straight, just mass apply. But while you're mass applying to all these entry level jobs, write down what different jobs are requiring that you might not have yet. Then learn those skills, find tutorials and etc. so you can actually meet the qualifications for these jobs and stand out compared to everybody else. Piggybacking on that, create a portfolio with projects, demoing, I did this on my own, I did this project. You might also find jobs that want experience, which is important because real world experience means a lot. And saying that, be realistic. Your first job is gonna be your worst. Don't have these high expectations, focus on getting your foot in the door. Try your hardest to get real experience as soon as possible. Apply for internships, volunteer for companies. If your friend has a website, say I'll test it for you for free. Put that experience on your resume because having any experience is better than having no experience and that helps separate you from everybody else at the entry level position. As I mentioned before, find what other companies are asking for that you don't have yet and then go learn those things. Do projects involving those tools or pieces of software. Then add it to your portfolio to show companies and link your portfolio in your resume and in your LinkedIn. That way you can say, I don't have any formal experience in this but I did do projects using this tool or this software. So I do have some hands-on experience. Alone, taking that initiative or an extra step can be the difference of you finding a job or not. I know this video was a lot, but I hope you found it helpful. And like I said, I'll create a separate video for automation and aesthetics. But if you did get any value from this video, Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them below. And most importantly, don't forget this, learn something new today.